Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And man, I'm excited, because today we get to set up the brand new Tool Plus Thermal Imager. All right, so I got a fun one today, guys. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen the new Tool Plus Thermal Imager right here, and right here, and right here, and then what is all this crap? Oh, man. Looks like we're gonna have to put this thing together. So maybe you have seen it and maybe you've gotten it and maybe it's in front of you and you don't know how to put the whole thing together. You don't know how to get it set up with the software. In fact, you may not know how to read the Chinese that's in the application to be able to use the program. Well, don't worry about it because over the next episode, I'll show you how everything works and I'm gonna show you how to use it. And with that being said, this is a very nice piece of hardware and it was not a piece of hardware that you know I thought I was gonna get anytime soon, but I will say that I did ask quite a bit of people, I was like, hey man, let me borrow your thermal imager so I can make this video, and only one person said yes. That was my friend Saad from Mobile Centric. So I really appreciate the fact that you let me borrow this, um, just so I can you know, kind of play with it a little bit, see what's going on, and show everybody else how it works. So this is a very, very easy, simple put together, okay? Um, you see this right here? That's all it takes to get this thing together. It should've came with a base, it should've came with a main unit, and it should have came with an arm. This is this is stupid, simple, easy, okay? So now that we can see that there's not that many pieces here, how does it go together, Justin? Well, that's super simple too. We're gonna take our base, we're gonna take our little stand here, our little arm, and you're gonna see that there's two little indentions here in the back. They go lock in here, and we're gonna take two of our three little turn knobs here. It's literally just the same as like a tripod mount kind of thing going in. All right, so that's there now. Um, we can see that there is a removable little, I don't know what this is made of, it's a rubber pad. I don't know if it's you know nice silicone or anything like that. But um, once we've got the main unit sitting here, we're going to take the head unit here, and we're gonna take a look at the head unit for just a second here, see what's going on here. We've got a thermal imager right here, and then we've got a regular camera right here. And if we kind of turn it to the side here, we'll see that it lifts up right here. See how it spins? That's how you focus it, okay? So just to let you know right off the bat, that's really the only adjustment on here that you're gonna have to make. So we're gonna take it, and we can see in the back here that we've got a couple things. We've got our ethernet, we've got our power, and then we've got another one of these little cubby holes that directly slides in right there. How about that? One more little screw knob. And we are technically together and ready to rock. That is that is really simple. That's not even that big of a deal. So what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna hook up our power and we're also gonna hook up our ethernet. And that's kind of the weird thing here. Most people are very used to USB cameras. Um, you know, you just plug them in, you get your you get your drivers, you hook it up to your computer, maybe some proprietary software or something. But this one's a little bit different. It actually uses ethernet to, to transfer all the data, which is, you know, much higher throughput and everything. But um, you'll see here pretty soon that it's actually really nice that it's set up that way. It doesn't really require any special drivers or anything. So we're going to go ahead and hook this up in here. Got that in the back. And then we're going to plug in our power. Again, stupid, simple, easy. You're going to hear some beeps. Maybe. All right, and at that point, it's pretty much on. But you're thinking, okay, Justin, well, how the heck do I even download this stuff? Well, cool thing about that is I'm gonna put a download link right down the bottom to make it super duper simple for you to download the software. And what's really cool about this software is once you install it, you literally just turn it on and it's gonna search over your network to find this camera, okay? So super duper simple. Um, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to that camera software now so you can kind of take a look and see what's going on here, okay? All right, so we put the thing together. I downloaded the software, Justin. I got it installed even though it was in a totally different language. I just kept clicking next and I got to the end there and it seems like I've got an icon now. That icon, which is right here, is probably in another language. So me being Justin, I went ahead and just changed it to an English name. It's PCB Thermal Imager because that's what I kind of feel like it is. It's a thermal imager. so. There's that. We're gonna open the application now. 
and we're going to see that it's going to ask us if we want to run network application.exe. Ooh, that's got to be sketchy, right? No, that is the software that's going to allow the computer to look around the network, be it through your router or just hooked up directly to your Ethernet, to find the camera itself. So we're going to go ahead and hit yes. And look at that. Instantaneously, we have an image. <laughs> I installed no drivers. Not a single driver did I install on this computer. I just installed the program. I hooked it up to the Ethernet. Boom, we're good to go. So now that we're in here, you're thinking, but Justin, everything's in Chinese. How do I figure out how this works? Um, well, that's really simple. There's only a few basic options that you need to know about to really understand and use this thing efficiently, okay? Ooh, look at that. Man, that is so cool. So I guess since we're looking here, what's the very first thing we need to figure out? Okay, the very first thing we need to figure out is how to focus this thing properly. You remember at the very beginning, I said, hey, there's that little twist knob. Well, look at that. You turn that twist knob and it's gonna focus, okay? Depending on how close you are to the actual panel, you're also gonna notice the separation in the image, okay? You see how like if my finger's up here, that, here, maybe you can see it like this. So if you follow my mouse, there's an outline of my finger here, but then there's a thermal image right here. Okay, well that's another weird thing, Justin. But it's not weird if you took a look at the beginning and you saw that both those cameras were offset a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna put our finger close to the actual bottom down here. We're gonna see it all comes together as one image. So we don't need to be doing thermal imaging up here, and you can see it's very, very you know obvious right there. And then it's all together right there, okay? Um, one thing that is very, very important is this thing reflects, okay? This is something I noticed right off the bat. It actually kind of threw me for a loop when I was doing one of my first case tests to see how this thing worked. You see down here that it's actually got a thermal reading, but there's no power going to this board. That's a reflection of the thermal camera's image on the, me uh, the metal down here, okay? So don't be fooled. Pay attention, okay? I would say that's one thing that's not really advertised about this, and you can see right there Look at that. So don't get fooled by fake thermal readings because it's a reflection, okay? Now that we see it here, now that we know how to focus it, how does this stupid program work, Justin? Just show me so I can go fix some stuff. Let's fix this real quick. All right. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take a look at some of these options up here, okay? This big orange button, this is kind of like a contrasting button. We're gonna go ahead and hit it and we're gonna see kind of a contrast from the most thermal energy to the least thermal energy. And you can see again here, we have that reflection from the actual camera itself. So it's actually seeing the thermal energy from the camera itself above, crazy. So again, don't be fooled by that. But that little button right here, that just shows the contrast. It's gonna help you, especially in cases where you have low current and it's not that readily apparent if you're say looking at this one right here and there's thermal energy coming from anything, everything, and you're gonna be sitting there like, wow, you know, I can't really tell what's going on. We're gonna hit this button, boom. It's gonna kinda of make things a little bit easier for us, okay? Next, we're gonna move on over. We see a little camera button. That's simple, we're just gonna take a picture, no big deal. We're not taking a picture right now. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now the next one here, we're gonna move on over and we're gonna see these little Chinese symbols that I personally have not translated. I have no idea what they are, but I know exactly what it does. So we can see right here, we're gonna go back to our regular view, and this first one is gonna be our grayscale. Oh, well that's kinda of lame, but you know what? I'm sure somebody has some sort of application for that. Next, we're gonna to go to the next one. So we can see right now that this is really just the color palette that's being used for the thermal imaging. Well, look at that, okay. We've got our normal one that seems like everybody's using, and then we have this other one. I'm not sure how I feel about this one yet, but it is kind of cool, and you know, maybe as I experiment more, it'll become more you know useful to me, but I kind of like the middle one right now. I think that's kind of where I'm at with it. Then we have one more little thing over here. What is this one? What is this one? Hmm, we have two cameras, so boom. We have an out of focus image of a board. So we're gonna go back in here again. And I, I kind of recommend doing this through the regular you know, camera set here where I just showed you how to do it so you can focus it properly. Um, I will say it's not the nicest thing to focus and it doesn't really keep its focus that well. But now we're in focus. We're gonna switch back 
and we, we technically have a finer grain, higher resolution image here, but you know, when you've got a thermal camera that's less than 200 pixels by 200 pixels, you know, there's only so much you're going to get when you stretch it out against a 1080p, you know, regular camera. So now that we've figured all that out, well, well, the he what, what the heck is this line that keeps showing up, Justin? Let's go back to the other camera. There is a big, huge, honking green thing over here on the side of the image. What is that? Well, remember, I've said this a couple times before now. We've got two cameras, okay? And those two cameras are a little bit offset. It's kind of like your eyes. They're not exactly going to see the exact same image, but they try to put it together in such a manner that it kind of syncs it together. Now, if, for instance, your, your camera... Well, let's see. Let's switch it back to the other one here. Let's say that you wanted to do something a little bit higher. Say you were, you were using like a little stand, okay? So we've got a little piece of block of wood here, and we're going to set it here. And for some reason, you just want to do it that way, but you're, you're sitting here. You can see that there is an outline right here that's actually supposed to meet up here. How do we fix that, Justin? How do I just make it work? Well, that's super easy, too. We've got some options over here, okay? The first one in the center is going to be our opacity, okay? So look at that. Our regular image is going, going, gone. But we can bring it back all the way back to 100, and we've got our full image again. But that still has nothing to do with alignment. Well, that's what these are for, okay? So we can see that it goes right to here. So we're going to take it, and we're going to move it over. And now we technically have a perfectly aligned image that is offset from the bottom of the panel itself, um, or the, the actual, like... Uh, like area that it's sitting down on and you know we can still get a clear image that's actually lined up properly and if you wanted to put it back then we could just look at the thermal image we see how it goes to right here no big deal we're just gonna move it back over and you're good to go it's that easy um, so as you guys can tell using this thing setting it up the whole shebang is actually a really easy, kind of pleasant situation that you normally don't get when you buy something from China. Um, so, so far I'm pretty happy with it. Don't forget guys, if you're interested in any of the tools I use, check out the description below. I even have my own custom tools that I sell down there as well that literally do not exist anywhere else on the planet except from the art of repair. I also have a Patreon where you can help support the channel so I can create even better high quality content.